Ooh, hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and I am joined here with the Oliver J. Hughes, audio extraordinaire, and we are here to talk to you all about audio, because that's that's why we're here. So, Oliver, say hi. Hi, how's it going? Happy to be here. Honored to be with the Who Is Matt official channel. Yes, yes, With yes, Matt yes. himself, who is <laughs> Here. Yes. Oh my gosh. It says that we're live. That's very good. Awesome. Uh, notes here. Let me look. Right. So as a little aside, if you are watching this live stream after the fact, I am taking the initiative to transcribe all of the questions that we are asked and I'm going to be putting them into the description of this video. So if you're watching it later and you're like, I don't want to watch this whole thing. Do I really need to? Well, if you want to, there's going to be a lot of stuff listed down there for you to check out. So there you go. We there have go. some people showing up here now. Oh, good. It was a little delayed, I think, but now there's people like, oh, hello, yes. I see it. We're here. Hunter Treadway, what's up, Matt? Full-time audio technician. Why are you even here then? You don't need us to answer your questions. You you do audio. That's okay, though. <laughs> I'm super lost. Ryan says hi. Mi Miss Miss Gina Mingist, why was Oliver looking around like he was super lost? I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> Raphael Setmat from Chile, we all love you. I love you too. We love you. Now people are coming in here. We're gonna start answering your questions whenever you start asking them. We have no other plans. Like we don't have anything to talk about. We've already been talking for like forty-five minutes. Literally, <laughs> we're just here. But can I just say, look at Oliver's stream. He's got one of those nice streaming things. So he's running into it from a GH4. Look at that nice lighting, nice color. I'm running like a janky Logitech setup. This is, his is so much better looking. Whatever gets the job done, right? Yes, so true. Oh my gosh. Um, Nobody's asking any questions yet. Oh well, that's okay. Hey, um, through the last pictures, best YouTube channel ever. Thank you. Husband and wife team here from Washington State. Oh man, Omar, fellow Aggie, yes. If anybody went to Belmont, that's where Oliver went. I'm sure that there's uh, five, yes. <clears throat> five dozens of you. Isn't that right? I don't know how big that school is. I know it's not that big. It's not that big. I was a, an official Belmont dropout. So I was there for two years. Yes, that's how you do it. That's the dream right there. Yes. Oh man, Mike Smith, what's up? Been looking forward to this, yes. All things Vadia, who has the better beard? Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and take this first question and say uh, beards are judged not on their style, but on their substance. And oh. in that case, who is Matt has the better beard? <laughs> it's it, You can judge a beard based on, like, length, or you can judge it based on, like, styling. I'm just going more on like the length, I think, just because there's, if you look at beard competitions, there's people that go either styled or natural. Mm -hmm. I'm fully on the natural side of things, I'll say. How long has that beard been growing, by the way? 2012? Oh, gosh. Oh it's been gosh. a while. Okay, have you we, ever trimmed it? I'm oh, sorry. yeah. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> we actually have audio questions now. Oh, yes. Um, this will be a good one for Oliver to answer, actually, at the start here. Hunter Treadway is asking... What do you think is the most overlooked audio gear that people forget? Hmm, that's an excellent question. <clears throat> I think for the most part, the overlooked, the missed opportunity is, and this is a little bit high level, but the missed opportunity audio gear is the splitter. And I know, Matt, you know about these audio splitters, the Whirlwind audio splitters. This is just a, it's going to take an XLR and split it into two perfectly balanced signals, send one back to the board and send one into a recorder. That is overlooked because it's a little bit technical, it's a little bit high level, but it gives you, if you have a good hand-holding uh, toaster, if you will, it gives you just the cleanest signal you can possibly get. So I would say that's probably the most overlooked No, I think, I think that's really great. And if you guys are wondering about the Whirlwind Audio Splitter, if you watch Oliver's channel, he actually has a nice overview of that exact splitter which I would highly recommend watching because as someone that owns the same exact splitter, there is not really an instruction manual that comes with that thing. It's literally just in the box and they're like, figure it out. And you're like, what does this mean? So Oliver's video was actually very helpful to me when I was starting out. I was like, how does this work again? All right. So definitely recommend that. The people that make audio gear are not the same people that make fancy manuals or fancy packaging. Yes, definitely. The audio is the only thing that they're concerned about. That's it. Correct. 
Correct. My sister is here. Matthew, your sister is here. Thank you, Lauren. Glad you're here. My sister's graduated from college. Very exciting. Um, let's look here. Miskina is asking, I have a wedding Saturday. Is the Tascam DR10L okay to use when the speaker is also using a microphone during a reception? I'll, I'll jump on that really quickly here. Um, yes, you should be perfectly fine with that because the DR10L is not wirelessly transmitting. So if you had a wireless transmission, it might be an issue, but because the DR10L is fully standalone, you should not have any issue with that. That's fine. Yeah, high recommends. Great idea. Um, Mike Smith, I'll start. What Zoom H4n settings do you use? Hmm. Do you use the H4n, Oliver? I used to. I got rid of it, and now I have an H6 and an F8. Um, mm. But for weddings, the H6 is the is the hot one. You take the H4n. I still have the H4n from like 2009, so I just have like never switched away from it. No, I think the H6 is really What's great. Wrong? I just haven't spent the money on it. Um, I know that the, uh, as far as like the H4N goes for me then really quickly here, um, what I do, all that I do whenever I'm using the H4N is I just have it set to auto level. So it's going to auto gain everything and I don't have to worry about it because once you start getting into needing to monitor your audio levels in a live scenario where you're also filming, you're going to forget about it. I guarantee you Correct. it's going to be in too quiet or too loud it's best to just trust the auto leveling at that point because you're not going to be able to stand by the DJ's booth the whole time and adjust it. Totally mm. agree. Comes in very handy. Yeah, this is good. Ant Anthony's asking, ideal gear for wedding, uh, for recording a voiceover audio, letter reading for, uh, for wedding films. Any tips while recording the audio? Um, you got that, Oliver? Yeah, is, voice is he asking voiceover separate from the... Wedding question? Or I is think, that I one think it's question? like at a wedding. So yeah. it's like if you have somebody that is like reading a, a letter at a wedding or something like that. Yeah. So letters, you know, when you do the letter thing, you have a couple things. You have a couple uh, issues you want to resolve that tend to not work well together. You want it to look beautiful and sound beautiful, right? But many times when it looks beautiful, you're by a window, by a lot of natural soft light, and it's going to be echoey and kind of nasty or in just the main room where everybody is. So this is always a tough one for me. I will usually roll with some sort of a mounted shotgun, whether that's the Rode Video Mic, Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, or if I'm using a, my bigger camera, the C100, I'll actually have a shotgun on board, which shotguns, like you all know, do a great job rejecting audio that's not in the field of its pickup pattern. So that's always good, can help with noisiness. But typically, uh, unless it's a bride that's, yeah. It, I will use a lav mic typically, and usually it's the DR10L, and I will mount it on. Uh, if it's if I'm with the guy, I'll you know hide it underneath his jacket or something. But if it's the bride, I'll try to get it hidden kind of around her, around her neck, maybe sometimes like behind her ear in her hair. Uh, actually, is a great place to put it. <laughs> um, stuff like that. So does that make sense? No, that's super solid. I think that's great, and and I'll echo that. Like a lav mic is how I do it, just because it's going to be very small, does not pick up well on camera. And it's only going to pick up a small cone of audio, just usually around the person that's speaking. So even if you're in a louder room, you're only going to hear the person speaking usually, which works out really well. Yep. Everybody's like, I bought the DR10L. Yes, because it's awesome. Everybody loves the DR10L. The DR10L is like the best thing to happen to budget audio in the last like two decades. Oh, for real. Oh, it's there was a um, group that I'm a part of. They were talking about it. And people are asking, like, should I buy a different microphone for it? And people are like, you're not going to find a better microphone for more than $150. It's yeah. it's very impressive for, yes. for what it does. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, O2PWRSTRK. That is a name. Doing my first wedding in November. You've inspired me. Free for a friend. What is one thing that you would say is the most important? Just uh, in general for a wedding? Audio. <laughs> Are we dying? That's, all day. Yeah. I, I honestly like I, you'll find that a lot of wedding films like starting out, including mine when I was starting out, were just pretty like visuals with music. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. audio is what is going to really drive the story there. So if you can have good audio, it's going to be way better. Let me just ask you, what do you think is more powerful? Moving images of someone you love over time or actually hearing them talking over time? I would argue that it's hearing them talking, in which case audio becomes even more powerful than the visuals, which are incredibly important. But 
audio is like this extra special thing. And so if you only had audio from your wedding, would you be disappointed? Yeah, probably. But if you only had video, no audio, I think you'd be more disappointed. Yeah. That's what no, I'd say. Definitely. Um, Andrew Porter is asking about the H4N. He's saying, you set the H4N to auto. Do you ever plug your lab directly into your camera? Do you want to tell him why not to do that, Oliver? Well, there's a lot of reasons why not to do that. Um, and the the main one is just you can't really go anywhere then. Uh, you'd be stuck um, unless you have a wireless system, in which case, yeah, sure, that's great to go into your camera. But for the DR10L, like we've been talking about, it is wired. And so, yeah, you don't want to run that into your camera. Um, yeah. I would, I would say um, the main reason that I have not been running uh, like a lav directly into my camera is because – um, I believe the wording here is preamps. Is that right, Oliver? Like usually, Correct. usually um, cameras such as the a7S II or most DSLRs, because I do not use a C100 or a larger cinema camera, they're mm -hmm. not going to have better what, good preamps. So that means Correct. that you're going to end up with a lot more noise a lot more quickly in your audio where you, I'm sure you've been there whenever you're recording audio and you hear that in the background, just, just the noise floor. That's yes. going to be there if you are just plugging directly into a camera that does not have good preamps. If you're recording into an FS100, FS700, FS5, C100, C300, those are going to have better preamps with actual audio inputs. Those will actually work better for recording directly from a lav mic. But if you're using smaller cameras, I would recommend recording directly into a Zoom recorder or another voice recorder that actually has dedicated preamps, and those should work better. And that's why the DR10L is so powerful because it does have wonderful preamps and it does record directly to its own unit and doesn't have to transmit. Because if you want to do wireless, you're looking at starting at three, four, five hundred dollars to even get something that's decent. So for half that cost, you got the recorder there, which is huge. It's pretty crazy. We're 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 big fans. Can you tell? Oh man, <laughs> it's like all we've talked about. It's fine. It's okay. That's basically like my life is like just buy the DR10L. It's okay. I have some just sitting on the floor over here, just waiting, <laughs> just waiting for an yes. opportunity. Oh, man. Um, Bryn McGee, hey, yo, love your stuff. Recommendations on affordable, high-quality lav mics. Um, I have – I'm I'm the person that's like I bought a Sennheiser G3 back in the day. I'm still using the Sennheiser G3's like lav mic as well as like with the DR10L. I'm just using the built-in lav mics for it. Um, but the lav mics that I have experienced with that I purchased otherwise are the Microphone Madness Matchstick lapel mics, which are very tiny, very small mic head, but they're really great for hiding on people, and I think the audio sounds really good. I know a lot of other people like the Countryman B6. That one mm -hmm. is a very popular lav mic. Oliver may know more about certain lav mics that are good than I do, though. Well, I was just going to say, I, my main is actually when I'm out doing an event or a wedding, if it's not the DR10L and the included mic, it's actually the Roadlink Filmmakers Kit, which is a wireless transmission system. And it just uses Rode's real small little profile, small profile guy. Um, I don't know what that mic is called, but it's made by Rode. And it sounds really, really good. And it's a lot thinner than the uh, DR10L's capsule. So it's easier to mount on somebody and hide on somebody. I've used that one for years, and it's great. If you buy the Rode Smart Lav, which is popular, that's like an $80 mic that'll go directly into a smartphone or an iPod. And it comes with a proprietary app to actually record the audio to your device. That's the exact same microphone in the filmmaker's kit, just without all the high level 2.4 gigahertz transmission stuff. That's right. That's one I use. And I will say, I just I actually just three weeks ago, I purchased the Countryman B3 via Sweetwater. But it, it and the Zoom F1 have been out of stock, so I've been waiting for it. I just got notification that it's shipped today, so I don't have it yet. But when I have it, I'll be testing it up and down yes. and left and right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So pumped about that. Oh, this is good. Dante Tron is asking – oh, where'd it go? I swiped – I scrolled away. I'm sorry. What do you do when a client wants to stop recording for privacy, like going to the bathroom, and they're wearing something like a Tascam <laughs> dr 10 Oh. Um, just I, tell them it's a transmitter and you trigger it. Yeah, no, we'll turn it off. It's okay. We'll turn it off, turn it back on. Um, I don't advocate always lying to clients, no. Um, what I would recommend usually and what I try to do is whenever I'm micing somebody for a wedding ceremony or something like that where I need to make sure they have the mic on for the ceremony, I will try to mic them as close as possible to the ceremony beginning. So it'll be like 10 minutes before and I'll be like, hey, did you already go to the bathroom? Okay, great. Here's this mic for you. Like – 
if you can already ask that question ahead of time, just say, hey, you go to the bathroom, right? Okay, great. Please go do that. Then I'll put the mic on you. That way you don't deal with them trying to take off the jacket and the pants and then things get difficult for you to deal with um, from an audio standpoint. Actually, the going to the bathroom audio is going to be the least of your worries because they'll be taking the pack off. It'll fall in the toilet. You don't want that. It's a legitimate fear. Oh, man. Uh, let's see here. This is good. Okay, here's one for you, Oliver. Timo Anger is asking, I'll have my first official interview shoot next week. Do you have any tips and tricks for a beginner audio recording? I'll probably use my Rode VideoMic Pro. Ooh, the interview, man. This is it. This is like this is the, the basis of you know the commercial video production is the interview. So obviously you got a video micro. That's an excellent mic. That'll do a little bit of rejection. Um, it's like a tiny little shotgun mic. So if you can find a way to get that mounted above your subject where it's pointed at their mouth and out of frame, that will be ideal. You could even, if you have a tight shot, you could go underneath them and point it up towards their mouth. But if you can just find a way to get that mounted, I don't know that you have a boom or anything, but I think with that mic and its little hot shoe, there may be a... Uh, with the three eighth inch uh, screw adapter on it that you could probably screw it onto like a mic stand. Anyway, using that mic, leveraging it to get it above them, like a shotgun traditionally kind of above and pointed down, I'd say would probably be the best bet for you with that little guy. I think, I think that's really great. That's, that's solid. Um, I, I, I say this as somebody that has tried to use a smaller microphone before, like the, like the video micro, it's definitely not going to sound quite as good as like some big, shotgun mic but it should still be totally usable in yeah. this situation just make sure that because it's a smaller mic if you can put the person into a room that does not have echo and into a room that is quiet where nobody else is speaking you'll be good but if you're in mm -hmm. some big warehouse you're gonna want that mic to be close to them to make sure you can hear them properly that's true um <laughs> greetings from poland at 2 a.m good night like <laughs> yeah sorry about that <laughs> Oh man, uh, MAF thirty six. What's up, dude? Uh, I met them in uh, New York a few weeks ago. Um, what is the best level to set your decibels to? Mm. So I assume this is asking uh, setting it where you how you're monitoring it, not actually like the levels on the recorder in the knob. the The best practice here. There's really no rules, but obviously you want to avoid clipping. So the best practice that I've always stuck to is try to get your peaks to hit between negative 20 and negative 12 dBFS, which on your little meter thing will show you on your levels um, that, you know, they go negative all the way up to zero. And if you absolutely are peaking above that, nothing should go above negative six because that's just going to be your safest bet. Anything above negative six and you're going to risk a clipping situation. And, you know, clipping situations, you can't repair it. So protect. <laughs> that's good. That's very good. Um, Elliot is asking two zoom recorders recording the exact same audio at the same time. If I record over a long period of time, they somehow go out of sync ever happened to you guys. Yes. Yes. That yes. has happened before. It's um, called sync drift. Yes. It's called, uh, well, as he said, sync drift or audio drifting. I've heard it called as basically what occurs is that the, and Oliver probably knows more about this than I do, but basically the audio is going to get out of sync over time. This is just due to. I don't know, different, you can explain better why Oliver, but the way that I fix it is there is a program that I use called Pluralize that syncs up all of my audio tracks and it has a feature called audio drift correction that fixes that as well. Oh my gosh, we got a super chat, $4.99. <laughs> yes. Andrew Mullins is asking here, what is he saying here? First of all, thank you both for everything you do. Anything catching your eye as far as audio gear you don't have and would like to upgrade to? Hmm. Oh, man. You want to take it? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll start go. here. and I'll, I, I, I say this as somebody that just bought, like, two more Tascam DR10Ls, so now I have, like, way too much on the, DR, on the, on the audio front. I'm pretty pretty set as far as audio goes right now as somebody that owns a zoom h4n and a zoom h5 i would love to replace one of those with a zoom h6 at some point or maybe one of the tascam dr40s i believe it is because mm -hmm. after using the dr10l and seeing how much i like having that extra backup track that the dr10l records where it records an extra six decibel below audio track i i would actually kind of be interested in having that feature 
in other audio in, in, in my other audio recorders such as the uh, the DR40. What about you? Well, I was trying to look this up real quick because I can't remember the brand name. I'd never heard of them, but there's a uh, YouTube guy I love, Curtis Judd. I'm sure a lot of you know him. He was just uh, down at, and it was an NAB that just happened. Um, and there is this, I think I'm going to botch this so bad, but there it's like a wireless transmitting system for a full-on shotgun microphone where it's going to send that signal wirelessly to a recorder like you do with a lav mic. Traditionally, those just destroy the fullness of a shotgun mic because that big old microphone, big old diaphragm, 48 volts of phantom power is a wonderful sounding mic. And when you compress it tiny down into frequencies to send in the air, it destroys it. So this one supposedly is is not going to do that. And I feel bad that I don't know the name of it, but it's a mystery piece of gear and I want it. So <laughs> want it. No, that sounds super cool. I didn't ever saw that. I need to go watch. I watch Curtis Judd occasionally. I need to, I, I, I'm subscribed to him, but. You got to brush up in your Curtis. I know. I got to check out my Curtis. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You guys look up C-U-R-T-I-S-J-U-D-D on YouTube. He's really great. Also subscribe to Oliver if you haven't yet. His, he's down here. He only has like, what are you at? 2,000 subscribers now? But like the quality huh? of the stuff that Oliver's making is so good. So definitely Thanks, recommend man. checking him out. Um, also, as you saw, Andrew Mullen asked us a super chat question. So he sent us some money. Dang it, we're splitting this. So me and uh, me and Oliver here are gonna split uh, two dollars and fifty cents each. That's like two Doritos Locos tacos right there. Yeah. That's so true. we're we're pretty set right now. But you asked a super chat question, we will answer you as quickly as possible. Ooh, uh, here we go. Um, through the glass pictures, do you have any videos on how to edit audio in post? So many videos. <laughs> I only have like Lots. one. Go to Oliver's channel though. He's got like 60 now or something like that. It's a stupid amount. Yeah, it's kind of a problem. Uh, Post-production audio is one of my five love languages. I believe that. I, and it's nice because I'll be like, how did I do this? Oh, Oliver has a video about it. Okay, great. <laughs> and he's going to explain it very clearly. It's it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ryan Bark will ask, Oliver, you had mentioned the Rode Smart Lav. Can that be used in other devices other than a smartphone? Probably a stupid question, LOL. That's No, that's a great question. And I don't know uh, if I know the answer because I, I think the answer is yes, but the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack that goes into a smartphone has is less grounded or less balanced than the one that would go into a recorder. Uh, you know how an XLR has three pins? It's got like a send, a return, and a grounding to keep it shielded, to keep it safe from outside signals. A traditional audio device like a lavalier microphone is going to be grounded like that, even if it's a 3.5 millimeter jack. I think to get it into a phone, you have to be ungrounded or unbalanced. Um, so I think it would work, but it may introduce a lot of outside noise into your signal. Um, so don't quote me on that because I know I said it was the same mic. It's definitely the same capsule. They may have a different connection. Uh, let's see here. Sean Reed says, "Typically, I'll have a sh typically I'll have my shotgun with H4N on my A7R2. When using the Zion Crane, it's hard to use a shotgun on the camera because it just gets so gosh darn high. Then, right? It's crazy. What mm -hmm. would you recommend as a solution for recording audio and the crane? Um, what I would say is that first of all, I believe that if you're not using a battery grip on your camera, and so you just have the uh, a, a smaller camera on the crane." I think that if you if it's if you're using the crane too at least and you buy the gravity adjustment plate that's going to lower it down, you may then have enough coverage there where the camera is now low enough that you could actually mount a shotgun mic onto it and be okay. But if you do not have that as an option, I know that there are companies that make attachments to, for the bottom of the crane where the tripod feet will go that will add an extra arm to it or something like that, or they even have the dual arm accessory that you can buy that will attach to it. And then you can attach a shotgun mic to that. And then that could run into your camera. So if you can't mount it onto the camera itself, there should be other options for you to at least mount it to an attachment to the crane and run a wire in. That's what I would do. Uh, let's see Love here. It. Who else? Who else is talking here? In other words, audio drift is a bug in the matrix. It, Yeah. I mean, <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> Sound Devices Audio Limited A10. 
says Joseph D'Amato. Uh, for my unknowing earlier, that device I was talking about. There you go. There you go. Uh, Sangeet Dean, what do you think about the Star SGC598? Is it worth buying? Do you know what that is, Oliver? I do not. <laughs> you have to Google that one. I'm going to Google this thing here. Uh, let's see here. Matt, Matt Shamlu asks, sometimes when I plug into a soundboard, I get a strange buzzing sound. Is there something I can do to fix or should I rely on backups at that point? Mm. Oliver, help him. Oh, gosh. The soundboards are full of the buzz, especially old analog soundboards that are just their wires are a mess. And it's some G DJ that's a cousin that came in with some. Anyway, I'll stop on that. But that is a 60 cycle hum. It is a ground loop. The only way to take care of that from your uh, perspective is to get the signal before it touches that board. There's really no way you can go in and ground that thing. You're going to have to find a different power source for it. You're going to have to mess with the wiring of it. So either you got to get a whirlwind audio splitter and capture that signal before it goes in or do the mat, the mat uh, technique where you actually slip the, uh, that Olympus recorder in the mic sleeve, which was new to me when I watched your B&H thing. Um, and yeah, or just rely on your backups because that is, you can't mess with that on the board. It's an electrical system going on on that board. And uh, there are ways to clean that up in post if you have no other options because it's a consistent sound. Consistent sounds are easy to take care of relatively compared to uh, scattered sounds. So I'm sure that that Oliver has videos on his YouTube channel about how to clean up sounds like that. Just I do, up, actually. <laughs> just, Conveniently. just throwing, up, throwing out ideas here for you guys. Um, <laughs> Okay, Sangi, I looked up that Taxstar SG Taxstar SGC five nine eight, and from what I I remember watching a review video of it, yeah. I don't remember who made it. Definitely like cheap little like twenty twenty one dollar uh, yeah. microphone. And if the reviews are good on it, and you don't have a big budget, I mean, I think the audio levels probably the audio is probably going to sound better than what you currently have which would yep. probably just be just built in camera audio. So I say, go for it. If you, if that's all you can afford, that's great. I had never heard of tax star, but that reminds me of Comica and uh, Fifine are these two other companies that I've seen and they have sent me their products. You know, they send all the small YouTubers, their products, they're cheap, $20, $30 shotgun on camera microphones. And again, just like Matt said, if that's your first mic, it's going to bring everything up a notch. That's good. Um, Skipping down here just a little bit because I'm trying to keep it with the chat here a little bit here. Uh, Blue Eye Visuals. Have either of you guys used DaVinci Resolve 15 audio tools? And if so, what do you think? Have you used that all yet, Oliver? No? I have not. <laughs> I, I have not. I, I'm, a, I'm a creature of habit, and it takes me so much energy to get out of what I know, and what I know is Adobe. So It's tough, right? Um, I've heard nothing but awesome things about DaVinci Resolve and their new sound stuff. I have not taken the time to learn that yet. I have it installed on my computer. I have played around with it a little bit, but the main goal for me right now is to get out of some of my backlog, do editing what I do know how to edit with. And then once I have a little more time, learn DaVinci Resolve, start applying that, and and then I'll start using some of that stuff. But I've heard very good things, especially for the price of free. Definitely worth it, in my opinion. 100%. Ooh, this is good. Uh, let's see here. Through the glass pictures, any plans for editing audio and video in Final Cut Pro in the future? Bum, bum, bum. Um, are you, uh, I'm on PC, so I don't even have the option of using Final Cut Pro. What about you, Oliver? Well, back in February, I downloaded the 30-day free trial of the full version of Final Cut. And this was because I was trying to develop a series of presets, audio presets, for Final Cut as well as Audition. Uh, because I wanted to honor all the people that follow me that do edit in Final Cut. Um, and the short answer is no, <laughs> it Luckily, didn't work for me. He had great dreams though. He wanted to you. so bad. <laughs> I'm a creature of habit and like trying to deal with that magnetic timeline. And when you click on audio, the first option is like alien voice. I was like, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No I'm offense. Sorry. I love everyone that like some of the best filmmakers I know use final cut. So it's, it's much love. Much love to it. I'm just... sorry I cannot have more answers there for you. I will give a plug to White and Reverie, great friends of mine. They are currently in the process of creating a massive wedding film editing masterclass in Final Cut Pro. And I'm pretty oh. sure a whole section of that is going to be devoted to 
editing audio using it. So they should be releasing it in a week or two, I think, but definitely look them up, sign up to their email newsletter on their site. I'm sure they'll email you whenever they send out this masterclass or follow them on YouTube because they're on there too. Uh, let's see here. Okay, non-audio question, but I do want to answer this here from Kyle Sharp Studios. I'm a professional wedding photographer who just got offered a position as a lead videographer. What gear would you suggest for a somewhat video newbie? I shoot Sony, by the way. <laughs> Man, Kyle, um, I would say that the benefit for you being a photographer is that a lot of the same gear is going to roll over to using for video too. So cameras are going to be there. Lenses are going to be there. The main different factor that you're going to deal with, well, there's two actually for video. First is going to be stabilization because you can't really just handhold the camera very well unless you have one of the new like A7S IIs or the GH5 with its awesome handheld stabilization. Even then, you're going to want some sort of stabilizer, monopod, tripod because you need to be able to have your camera steady for a while. So I would at bare minimum get like a monopod starting out and a tripod so that way you can record the ceremony. You don't have to just handhold the camera the entire time during the ceremony. Um, so that, that'd be like, first thought there is stabilization. Second thought is gonna be audio related because you need audio, so much audio gear. Um, just for starting out though, I would buy two Tascam DR-10Ls. Put one on the efficient, put one on the groom or the bride if you need to, um, depending on who's wearing what, like how they're dressed but I think you can probably get by with two DR-10Ls and you should be pretty set. Anything to add to that, Oliver? No, I think that's absolutely perfect. Perfect. Luis Hernandez, Oliver, on your channel, do you have videos using Adobe Audition? Yes. <laughs> I think I have like 110 videos or something. I think like 91 are about Audition. Like if you need to know anything about time. Audition, Oliver, Oliver's got the hookup for you in so many ways. <laughs> so much audition stuff. It's it's really great. He knows, like, I dip my toes into audition, but I'm like, ooh, I can do this in Premiere? Okay, great. I don't want to have yeah. to open that up. But, like, audition is deep, and if you have any audio that you need repaired or changed, like, more heavily, audition's where you do it. Oliver has a lot of videos that will help you out on that. Yep. Um, Premiere. Moonbound Films. Do you record into a computer or audio recorder? Um, I always use an audio recorder. Um, until lately I bought a USB audio interface. Oliver, do you want to talk to him about audio recording the computer? Yeah, well, that question is completely dependent on context. I mean, if you're out in the field, you need a recorder. Um, but if you, the only reason you would record into a computer with an interface is if you're doing a live stream or a podcast or you're a musician and you're recording. So, yeah, you, that's totally dependent on, on context. I need, I need both for my purposes, so... That's good. Yeah. Um, Matt Shamlu is asking Oliver specific questions here. I love Matt. Hung out with him in New York, but all of his questions are for Oliver. That's okay. Ask Oliver. Other than DR10L, <laughs> what is the best slash tiniest recorder that you would recommend? Oh, I saw that one. So I can't speak to this yet because, like I said earlier, it's somewhere in translation, but the Zoom F1 is headed my way. It is a competitor to the DR10L. It's a newer release. It does... Uh, it comes with its own uh, microphone, just like the DR-10L. So I think, if anything, that would be the only thing that potentially could rival the DR-10L. But the only other thing that is that small and quality is Electrosonics one that's like $800, so that doesn't count. Um, DR-10L, all day, all night. You need it. <laughs> you need I, At least you need two of them. And even if you don't shoot weddings, like you just have a great mic and recorder just for any application anywhere. Definitely. I've been... Um... I've been very interested in the Zoom H, the Zoom F1 though. So yeah. I will watch your videos whenever it arrives and you make videos about it. Because from yes. everything that I've seen, it looks like it's a decent competitor in some ways to the DR10L. But at the same time, I'm like, that thing's really bulky and mm -hmm. it has like bright silver on it. I'm like, I don't, I, yeah. I want something stealthier, which I like about the DR10L. But I feel like with the ability yeah. to add shotgun mic attachments to it and stuff, it's definitely more versatile in certain ways. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is good here. Um, th this is for you, Oliver, as well, just because I feel like you can answer this more competently than I can here. This is why I like bringing people that are way smarter than me onto the live streams. I'm like, help me, <laughs> help me here. Okay, good. Um, Luis Suarez, what are the possible issues of mixing 44 kilohertz with 48 kilohertz audio? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the short answer is if you have a good NLE or a good DAW, digital audio or station, there won't be issues because they are correcting those in real time. The big issue with sample rates is in actual recording. Um, so if your uh, audio interface is running at a, a hardware sample rate different than your software, you'll, you'll run into issues. If you have two recorders, we talked about sync drift earlier. That's basically an issue of how the clock works the sample rate. So those are going to be the issues. Um, but if you mix them, I tell you what, I bring my projects into Premiere. I've got 196K stuff. I've got uh, 44.1 stuff that I got off the board or I got from USB drive. I got 48 kilohertz audio uh, music. You know what I mean? When it all gets in there, a good NLE will take care of all that and send you a nice, clean stereo mix in 4800. That's good. So, uh, Ral Good Films, how do you limit clothing wrestle when miking under a jacket? I started using right hood undercovers and found that I get a lot of noise. I tried using the furry covers. I still got noise. Um, what I would say is usually whenever I am miking somebody and I'm using one of the uh, – and I'm putting it under their jacket, I'm usually trying to put it as close to the edge of the jacket as possible because usually we, even with fitted jackets, they're usually a little bit looser right at the, I don't know, lapels here basically. So – I find that if I have it right up against that edge, like I'll even put the sticky part right up, just barely hidden. What I find is that that way I don't get nearly as much rustle because it's not caught up underneath between the, the shirt and the jacket. It has a lot more room to, uh, to kind of have some air around it, which helps out a lot. Um, That's good. Let's see here. <laughs> I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. If I scroll past your question, just ask it again and we will get to you. I promise. Hopefully. If not, you can email either of us and we will answer your question then. That's true. Uh, let's see here. Sean Reed says, over the wedding day, do you guys keep audio from at least one source pretty much always recording? Or do you get very specific on when to use it slash record so you can focus on camera work, for example? Um, I'll, I'll start here and Oliver can jump into. Uh, I am always, I, I'm a big fan of like setting up audio and then just letting it go for if, if it's like a ceremony or a reception, if I can just set up the audio at the beginning and then not have to think about it so I can focus on recording all of the video, then that's what I would like to do. But there are certain smaller situations like letter reading or something like that where put the mic on, set record, take the mics off afterwards. That way you don't deal with like people losing the microphone by them uh, like taking off their jacket or leaving it somewhere or something like that. Yeah, that for me, that's pretty context specific. The only reason I would let something run is if I just can't get to it. Kind of like what you're saying, Matt, like if you want to set it and forget it, that's great. I, I hate setting it and forgetting it. I, I love to monitor it, which is impossible at a wedding day. Uh, so you just have to find a good balance. I mean, a DR10L is probably just going to run if you can't get back to the groom and get it off him, you know what I mean? So stuff like that will happen to me, but I don't like to do that. I don't necessarily want to just catch everything unless I'm specifically told to, which has happened to me one time, where the, the, both the bride and the groom literally wanted me to record them all day, and I had like eight hours of audio. So. <laughs> oh, man. Um, let's see here. Sky Films is asking more about 48 hertz versus 41 hertz. What about 48 hertz versus 41 hertz at a wedding export video? I think he's asking yeah. what hertz should you be exporting your audio at? Well, again, this it, it, it doesn't necessarily really matter, but for kind of just like the rule of thumb is you got to stay 48 for video content. 44.1 is the traditional CD. That's where that sample rate was developed for to fit as much music as we possibly could on this new digital medium that was this spinning disc that came and went very quickly in our society. <laughs> Um, and that's why 44.1 came, but 48 is traditionally the best, uh, mix between getting as much data as you can without going overboard. Um, and I could talk a lot more about that, but it would get real nerdy real quick. <laughs> I will say that I've had a lot of people email me and they'll say like, Hey, so I'm recording at 48, but should I be doing 92 or should I like record a 196? I'm like, you don't need that extreme for somebody mm -hmm. speaking like Normally, whenever you're in a studio and you're dealing with a lot of different instruments and you're mixing things and doing all this work, that's whenever you're going to be wanting to record at those very high sample rates. But if it's, yes. correct me if I'm wrong here, Oliver, but if it's just somebody just speaking into a microphone, 48 is going to be pretty darn good for you. Well, I, I struggle with, uh, with not just going maximum all the time, but you don't need it for dialogue. 
like you said, it is for music because here's a very quick thing I'll say and then we'll move on. The theory, or, or actually the reality is uh, you can only hear as many frequencies as half the sample rate. So if you're at 48, 4,800 hertz, you're going to hear up to 24,000 uh, hertz in frequencies, which is higher than the human ear can even hear. So that's why it's competent. It's enough. But there's theories that go higher than that affect the th that what we hear down at below in our human frequencies. So anyway, that's for music. It's for violins and stuff. So don't worry about it. Bum, bum, bum. So your subconscious will be affected. That's what we're learning yes. here. But probably not for like somebody just delivering a letter reading. So don't worry about it. Totally. Um, okay, Brennan's asking me to elaborate here. Way back when you talked about ways to eliminate buzz when recording wedding audio, one of them was the mat technique. <laughs> Trademark. Can you go into more detail on that? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I do not have it in front of me right now, but basically, if you go back and watch my depth of field talk at BNH, which is on my channel, um, essentially, I take the DJ's microphone, I have a stretchy mic sleeve, and a voice recorder such as a Sony... ICD UX, I don't remember the exact name of it. Um, I have that recorder and I put it into the mic sleeve that goes around the microphone. And that way I record my own separate audio track that is pristine and unmessed up by any sort of buzzing sound that the soundboard may introduce or anything else like that. And I use that often at weddings. I find that it works out very well and that's very good quality audio for me to be able to use. Incidentally, in the video description down there, um, there is a link to my kit page, which has a audio kit section which details literally all of the audio gear that i use so highly recommend checking that out if you want to see any of this audio gear that we're talking about here uh, i'm gonna scroll down a little bit here because we got to catch up a little bit here uh oh okay hi uh Dro dronen kunst i hope i'm pronouncing that right it looks to be german because he says hi from germany question about the zoom h4n pro last week in our recording event in four channel mode I had two XLR mono inputs, but when I open up the audio file on my back, there's just one file for XLR. Bum, bum, bum. Put all it right. in your NLE and see if it splits it out into all those tracks. Because the Zoom F8, for example, a professional high-end recorder that you don't need for weddings, it's totally for like boom up. When you record multiple channels, there is a way that it just packages it up into one nice clean file. It'll sound like kind of a wonky stereo mix because everything's going all over the place. But when you throw it into Premiere, it'll give you eight channels in Premiere. So try to bring it into your NLE. I wonder if the H4N Pro, is that what he said, H4N Pro? Yeah. Then I wonder if that might do that. And then just go into the menu and see if there's a setting that is like package audio or record into package, something like that. I would check that out. I would check that. Um, I also know that at least on my H4N, there is a feature called Mono Mix. That if mm -hmm. you have that turned on, Premiere will mix the two audio files together into one and not give you two separate channels. So I don't know if that's necessarily going to help you now because they're already mixed together potentially. But in the future, if you turn off mono mix, you will have two separate audio channels and you will not deal with any sort of mixing between the two, which that's more ideal. Uh... Respect. <laughs> Brad Leon, when you first started out, did you always have a good spread of audio equipment or did you function with a bare bones setup? If so, what was your bare bones newbie setup? Oh man. Okay. I'll, I'll start here and then we'll let Oliver jump in. Cause I'm sure we both have very different stories, but it's probably the same in the sense that, uh, my first wedding I ever shot, I borrowed a, um, Sennheiser G2 from a friend of mine and I put that onto the efficient, and that was the only audio that I recorded from the wedding day. Actually, no, I put it on the groom. I didn't even put it on the efficient. I put it on the groom. And so that was like my entire audio source for the entire wedding day was just that. Um, since then, highly, highly recommend investing into multiple system, <laughs> multiple sources of audio, not just that. What about you, Oliver? Um, this is, I don't know if this is going to sound snobbish or what, but my very first wedding, I used an H6. And uh, the Rode NTG3, I, audio gear has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember because I started in this whole game in the music world and I went to music school and production school. So I've been, I used Roland recorders to record live stuff when I was in high school. So I've been doing this for a long time. So I started with a lot of good audio gear, but video was new to me. So came into that uh, as a noob, if you will. That's so great. So pro. Oh, man. But I should also state that uh, Oliver also, like, 
is a musician. He has music up on Marmoset Music. Like, he's a big deal, guys. That's all I'm saying here, okay? <laughs> um, okay, good. Tyler Harrington is here. Oh, thank God. Good call, Tyler. We love you so much. Oh, my gosh. What he just said is is probably another solution to uh, Drone and Kutz's problem. Uh, what did Tyler say here? Um, that it recorded a stereo mix of both mono signals, and you just need to split them out manually. There you go. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Corey asks, can you speak a bit on recording audio from a digital recorder to a soundboard? How can we d- identify the correct output to record from? I would say if you have a competent DJ, <laughs> which I've had mixtures of before, usually if the DJ knows what they're doing, they will know where an output is that you can plug into and they will help you tune and tweak it. As long as you show up at the beginning of the reception to do it and you're not like halfway through and you're like asking them to interrupt all their music playing to do it. That's mm-hmm. why I always advocate showing it whenever you first show up, plug into the soundboard. Um, for me, I usually find that there is a tape out section that you can plug into with RCA cables and that usually works out very well from recording directly from the board if you if you need to do that um yeah can I speak to that real quickly yes the one thing to keep in mind is you always want to go for a balanced signal out versus an unbalanced signal out when you can so never take a signal out of the headphone out even though it's going to be a quarter inch jack it's an unbalanced signal. You're going to get a lot of that, like, tss, that nasty hiss sound, and you're going to get introduced to other noise. So anything that says auxiliary out, you can use as long as the board, you fade up the aux out. That's channel by channel. Look for a main out or a submix out or, again, the tape out. But that one is also unbalanced, but you're using RCA cables, which are different than XLR. So that's totally doable as well and clean. So that's No, that, that is super yeah, great advice. Great. Like when I was starting out, I'm like, oh, the headphone jack, just plug into this, right? But like yeah. what well, swayed me away from that is the continual bad audio that I was getting. So that's yeah. how I learned that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Backyard Junkie, how would I best use a Zoom H4n with DSLR in the field? That's going to be very context specific depending on what you are recording. But if you only have both of those, then... What I've done before when I was recording a friend of mine playing music before is I just had the Zoom H4n mounted with a hot shoe mount to the top of my camera to record better stereo audio in front of me. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you have the option with different cables and a soundboard to plug into, the Zoom H4n is incredibly versatile. You have so many different inputs and options. You can record with it with its own microphones. You can plug into it. A lot of versatility there. Yeah, and I when I first started, the only mic I had was actually the XYs on the Zoom before I got my shotgun, and I used to use that on top of the camera because stereo audio, when you're just shooting a B-roll type of scene, can be amazing because it really sets the scene for you. It's that double sound pointed in XY. It's two mics capturing the whole space rather than mono, just capturing one. So anyway, it's, it's not that good for dialogue, but great for like spaces and bringing people into a moment, if you will. Definitely, definitely. A uh, very important question here from Tom Ryan. Hi, Matt. Do you prefer carrots or celery? Well, um, to be honest here, I had a bad experience back a long time ago when I ate too many cel- too much celery with peanut butter, and I got kind of sick from eating that much. <laughs> too many celeries. Yeah, too many celeries. Too much. Too much celery. How, however, you pronounce that. Yeah. Too much, ended up hating it. And so, like, even to this day, I'm like, oh, celery. No, I can't do it. But I love carrots, dude. I'm like a little rabbit. I can eat I can eat a lot of carrots. That's fine. Um, important, very important question. Oliver, yeah. what's your what's your stance? You know, I prefer not to answer that, sorry. You know, that's okay. He's got that's kids. kind of a private that's a private thing for he's, me. He's got kids, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, Morgan sure. Treester, should I sell my Zoom H five for an H four N Pro? Ooh. Hmm. hmm. Um, I would say if I had to, yes. And the only reason is because the H5 does not have the auto leveling feature that the H4N does. It just doesn't have it for some reason. You'd think better version, higher number, like, ooh, H5 instead of four, it's got to have it. No, doesn't have auto leveling. Killed me whenever I bought mine and it didn't have that. So that's why I rarely use the H5. That's why I'm always using the H4N. Fair point. 
Is that going to freeze in Oliver? I hope so. Well, I honestly, I don't know enough about the H4N Pro. I haven't really been in, in seeing that transition, so I can't really speak to it. I, if, if auto leveling is its big thing, that's, that's balling. And if you have good auto leveling, that's huge because auto level typically can be terrible. You know, Definitely. it like boosts the, the noise floor to like 100 decibels. And then when someone taught, you know, that stuff. So what, what I found with the H4N, the way that it handles it is it will record it as high as it can up near whenever it starts. But then as soon as there's like a loud sound, like a clap or a cough or something like that, it's going to drop the levels down and it will not bring them back up to that high level again. It'll kind of just keep them at that new noise floor. And that usually helps out a lot. So it's smart. It's semi-intelligent. We'll say that. Yeah. Cool. Um, AJ Moore is saying, Oliver, we the same kind of talent with being a musician, audio engineer, videographer, editor. I'm a follow stuff you do now. There you go. Yes. Hey, man, let's be pals. Musician, audio engineer, videographer, editor. There's got to be a shorter way to say that, but I kind of like saying it all together there. <laughs> do it all. Um, I'm a musician. Okay, another question here for Oliver because he can definitely articulate this better than I can. Uh, Bayan Chin, is it better to record wave for a regular voice? Is there a huge difference between wave and MP3 files? Could you tell me more about kilohertz? <laughs> Just tell me more Let's about talk- kilohertz. Hey man, how are you? How are kilohertz? You know, <laughs> um, it is always better to record wave for voice if you have plans to edit that audio. Just like if you translate that over to picture. It is better to record in raw if you have plans of color correction and color grading because you're taking in more data, you have more to work with. An MP3 is a highly compressed audio file. A wave is a raw or lossless audio file. So the answer to that, the short the short answer to the long answer is yes. Uh, kilohertz, I mean, we could talk about that in a couple different contexts. Uh, kilohertz across the EQ spectrum. I don't know what you're getting at there. <laughs> we, we 4,800 can, kilohertz sample rate, you know, that kind of stuff. We don't, I don't know if we have to necessarily answer that one. That one's a very broad question. If you could drill down more than just tell me about hey, kilohertz. That's like some, I'd like to sit you down and we need to talk about kilohertz. <laughs> that's like, can we talk about video? Like, yeah, we can. It's what do you want to know? I, I, I'm pro kilohertz. <laughs> pro kilohertz. We're very pro kilohertz here. Um, through the glass pictures, what is the difference between stereo and mono? Um, oh. Oliver, I could probably go on a little extended. Let me let me try this here, and then Oliver will correct me if I'm totally wrong here and all. But <laughs> like, all. like basically stereo coming out of two speakers, left and right. Mono coming out of one speaker, just one one channel. Is that as simple as possible? <laughs> yeah, it really is. Stereo is two signals. Mono is one. But mono, you hear in two channels. So it's the same signal coming to two ears versus two separate signals coming to two ears. And they're, they're not, one is not better than the other. It's, it's contextual. Yeah. It depends on what you need. You never record dialogue in mono uh, because, uh, sorry, you never record dialogue in stereo. You want stereo to be like setting a scene, capturing a space, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I will say that whenever I am recording um, anybody speaking, I'm always recording that in mono, and then I'm just using an effect, fill left or fill right in Premiere to add that to the other channel because I do not want whenever somebody's speaking, say they're holding the microphone here, I don't want every time that they turn their head to then be coming out of a different speaker, and that can be really weird. I just want it to be a consistent, clear audio channel of the person speaking. Yeah, and Matt, you bring up a great point. If all you have is that H4N and you have only those stereo XY mics, just simply do the fill left with right or right with left. Turn that into a mono mix, basically. You just kill one of the channels, and it'll sound better for dialogue. Yes, 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 yes. Look at all this helpful stuff we're telling people here. Tell, <laughs> tell us more about kilohertz. No, I'm sorry. Um, Son, I think it's time we sit down and talk about kilohertz. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so good. Bye, Ann. I do not mean to be mean to you. It's just a great question. Okay. Um, Have fun. Let's see here. Uh <clears throat> Scrolling down a little bit more here. Sickhead. Zoom H1 field record Zoom F1 field recorder with the shotgun attachment. Any good? We don't know yet. We don't have one. Oliver's I'll report to, back to you. Oliver's about to get one. Go subscribe to his channel and be notified the instant that he posts <laughs> 30 videos about the F1, because there will be that many, believe me. He has a compulsion. <laughs> um Okay, uh, Mark Zola eighty one. Hey, what's the best way to get no wind sound off a lapel mic? I will, I'll start off here by saying using some sort of 
wind cover of some sort, either buying uh, some Rycote over covers to put over it that are like fluffy, hairy looking critters that will block the wind. Um, what else you got, Oliver? That's really the best thing. I mean, when it's really windy out and we're outside, that type of thing for a commercial situation, I usually hide lobs anyway, but that's the, the great time to hide it. And if they're wearing double shirts, you want to hide it on the innermost shirt, which, so here's the thing. You, you manage clothing rustle versus uh, clarity of, of the microphone, and you got to mess with that. But, yeah, just put it inside. There's not much else you could do. Rhodes uh, uh, Filmmaker Kit that I talked about earlier comes with this ridiculous wind cover that's like the mic is this tiny little capsule and this thing is like i'm serious it's like three inches wide so it's like little lav mic and this massive hairy thing so i i rarely use that it's beefy uh, yeah okay good question here from ral good films a lot of times djs will direct me to xlr out on a speaker for recording would an aux out on the speaker be a higher quality source than this hmm so in in my experience with, especially with the Zoom H4n, I find that the Zoom H4n does not handle XLR outputs as well as it handles quarter inch or RCA outputs. Because in general, whenever I plugged in XLR, especially on the back of speakers, that is a ton of power and a ton of volume usually being driven to that speaker. And if the DJ does not have the levels perfectly balanced going into that speaker, you're gonna end up with some heavy peaking and the H4N is going to be working hard to compensate. And you're going to see its auto levels go down to like one out of a hundred trying to compensate for that extra volume. So that's why I usually recommend plugging into the soundboard versus plugging into the speaker, because you're just taking yourself further and further away from the real source of the audio. So if you can plug into the mic box first, do that. If not use the whirlwind XLR splitter, that Oliver has videos about that we know and love. If you don't have that, then plug into the soundboard. Last choice should be the speaker if you have no other option. But talk to the DJ ahead of time if you can. Get to know them. Beg and plead with them to plug into a good audio source. Anything else for that, Oliver? No, that's it. Perfect. Yes. Okay, good. Um, there you go. Uh, Brandon McGee, what is the meaning of life? 42, bro. That's what people are saying. <laughs> Okay, um, H. Berry, this is a good question for you, Oliver. Another MP3 or Wave in Post question. MP3 or Wave in Premiere Pro? I've read that MP3 doesn't work well in Premiere Pro and only use Wave. What is your experience? Well, I would say the same thing I said earlier. MP3 is compressed, Wave is not. Uh, they both work fine in Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro will handle them just fine. Um, it just depends on what you have. I, I like Wave for everything. If I'm doing sound effects and there's an option to do Wave or MP3, I'm going Wave. I just like it. I'd rather have the more, you know, extra data, more things to work with. Always going to work out better. That's good. Uh, Tone Media is asking, what is your favorite purchase of audio gear so far this year? What ha what have I bought mm. this year? Um, honestly, probably the white dr 10 I already had two yes. black dr 10 but the white one, being able to mic the bride has been definitely a game changer in terms of the audio quality that you're able to get from also hearing the bride speak. That's really, really good. Mine would probably be the Zoom F8, which again, is not really geared towards weddings, but I have it right here and I love this thing very much. Yes. Um, it's introduced just a higher standard of quality to the audio signal chain. So it's been a good purchase. Got That's that good. from Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Are you, are you, affiliate, are you in Sweetwater affiliate? You, you're always driving out like Sweetwater. Love Sweetwater. Sweetwater. <laughs> no, I just love that they call me every time I buy something. Like, hey, man, good purchase. Like, it's coming your way. Uh, you need any help with that? That's I'm like, so yes, I, I do, I, but I don't. But I want you and <laughs> you're my friend. I have, I have not purchased anything from Sweetwater. I need to start. I need to get on that. They have a really dangerous zero interest credit card that's like two years. So it's bad news. Yes. And no, I'm not an affiliate with, with Sweetwater. I would be if I could be. I don't know if they would approve me or not. I should try. That's good. That's good. Uh, Colin Gearing is asking, how do you know where the levels are at on the H4N if it doesn't have the decibel numbers on them? Uh, the H4N does have the little readout there where it'll tell you negative 6, negative 12, negative 18. And is it? I think that's what you were asking here. But um, as long as you're hitting between negative 20 and negative 12 about in your recording, 
you're going to be pretty good as far as quality goes. And then you can bring up those levels closer to, to zero whenever you're editing to make sure the sound is good without peaking. Um, Faux show. <laughs> let's see here. Ulysses Diaz, super helpful information, guys. Matt, do you have any videos about packages and pricing? I know the live is about audio. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do not have videos about that yet. Would love to make some of those in the future. It's in my massive list of videos to make eventually. I apologize. Okay, Bayan Chin has clarified on the kilohertz here. I mean, recording formats like 44.1, 16-bit, 48 kilohertz, 16-bit, or 96 is the higher the better. Will the audience notice the differences in a YouTube video? Thank you for, for clarifying the kilohertz. We appreciate you. Matt, do you want to speak to that? Or you want me to? You got it. Okay. So here is the difference between sample rate and bit rate. Sample rate is how many samples of digital audio per second. Bit rate is the, uh, the depth of each of those samples. So 16 bit, there are 16 ones and zeros in each of those 44,100 samples every second. 24 bit, there's 24 numbers, 24 ones and zeros inside each of those 4,800 kilohertz per second. You get it? So the higher the better as far as quality and data goes. But again, you are great. If you're getting a recorder that does 16, 44.1 wave files, it's going to be golden. And will audience notice the difference in a YouTube video? They will not. They most definitely will not. So very that's my good. Answer. Very good. No, that, that explains it far clearer and quicker than I could. So that's great. Um, through the glass pictures for wedding audio, you said you typically put the lav mic on 10 to 15 minutes before the ceremony. When do you take it off of them in between the ceremony and reception? Yes. Uh, usually I take them off as quickly as possible. So a couple walks down the aisle, they're like married now exiting. I follow after them, film them having their happy moment. And then I'm immediately like, let's take off those microphones. So I'm taking everything off of them. Then I'm running inside, finding the efficient, taking the mics off of them, unplugging all my stuff from the soundboard. My goal is to, as quickly as possible, within three to five minutes, have all of my mics back in my possession, in my case, safely stored. So that way I do not forget about one, which has happened to me before. And then I've had like the father of the bride who was speaking or, you know, somebody like who is, I like mic that I wouldn't normally mic come up to me like way later. Like, Hey, you're, did you want this microphone? I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yes, I did want that. Thank you. <laughs> the worst. Oh, crazy. <laughs> so yeah, very, very good. I have um, had to drive to chase mics down before. I'll just say that. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Sean Reed has a good question. I think you can handle this one better than I probably can. Oliver here. Um, where did it go? I scrolled down. Uh, what would you recommend as the most ideal setup for H friend and shotgun while handling your camera when doing a gig alone? Mm. Or what is your setup for capturing background audio while filming H four N shotgun? Yeah, that's a great question. That would be contextual. So if you're talking about like running and gunning, shooting a wedding and you want to have pickups on top of the camera, it can get kind of clumsy and heavy having all that up there. I started with that though. The first camera I ever bought that was a like prosumer or pro professional camera was the GH4. Small little guy, smaller than most DSLRs. And I got this like Velo uh, Tri Hot Shoe adapter so that I put that in the hot shoe mount. I had a recorder on one of the hot shoes and a little shock mount on a hot shoe with a, with a shotgun mic in it. So I pulled it off back in the day. That if that's all you have, then yeah, get that little velo mount. It's like this little V shaped thing that just adds three extra hot shoes where you just have one. Nice. My personal setup when I'm capturing background audio, when I'm doing a commercial project or a wedding, I do the same thing and I am out capturing the B roll. I'm all about the space. Like I want to, I want the space to be something that we enter into when you're listening to it. I love stereo audio, and this guy right here. The Stereo Video Mic X is the best overall package to capture high quality stereo audio in a small, easy to use little guy that just sits right on top of your hot shoe mount and plugs in with either 3.5 millimeter or two XLRs, which is my style. That's nice. So, that's what I use. I love that thing. I've had it for about a year. Um, that's my, my gig. Yes, that's good. Oliver, scoot to your right like two inches. You're like, there you go. Yeah. You were, a little, <laughs> Thank you. you were a little out of the frame there for part of that. I was, Sorry, like, hey, I was staring at questions. He's drifting. He's drifting. He's over here like, Sink yeah, Sink I got, I got Killer great, great Kill ideas here to talk about. Let me tell you. Okay. It's been like an hour here. So we'll go for another like, I don't know, five, 10 minutes here. And then 
he has kids. He's got he's got kids to take care of. I don't, but still, Kiddo. I got dinner to eat. Dang it. Uh, okay, another good question here uh, from Denny Dummy Films. Nervous about the short film I'm about to do. I do weddings and commercials, but short films are such a pain audio wise. I was thinking this time around to boom and laugh talent. Um, usually in all the short films that I've worked on, which has not been a lot, but usually I find that if you're going to be running audio uh, using a boom, that's pretty much the standard because then you don't have any sort of microphones visible because it's short film. Once you ha have a mic visible, you're breaking all of the rules basically. And then people know that it's a film. So that's why people use booms because you can get good audio while holding the pole up high, you know, above them. That's usually why it's done. That's what I would recommend doing. If you have to lav them, feel free to, but like try to hide it underneath the layers of clothing so that way it's not visible at all. Um, I'm gonna scroll down here just a little bit more here. Let's see here. Uh, scrolling down, there's a lot of questions here. <laughs> Uh, Kylie, hi Matt. I had some shot audio because of microphone peaking. I know the family of the bride really well. Would it be weird to ask the mother of the bride and maid of honor to reread their speech? I don't necessarily think that would be weird. I mean, I've had what I had a wedding before once where the wind was like 30 mile per hour winds, got married outdoors. All of my audio failed. Like it was all staticky during the vows. It sucked because there was just too much wind noise. And so what I did is I told the couple, Hey, I'm, so really sorry about this. I, I would love to meet up with you to have you re-record your vows. And they said, of course, yeah, that's no problem. So next day met up with them. They hadn't gone on their honeymoon yet, so it worked out. Met up with them. They sat in their room facing each other, read their vows. And if you go back and watch the video, it you cannot tell that they re-recorded because they match up just so well with what they were saying. So that's a definite option. It depends kind of on the speech, like the length of it. I, if it's a long speech, what you might want to do, especially if they're not like haven't written it all out is maybe think back, watch back your video. And then if there's some parts that you know that you're going to want to use in the video, have them re say those parts, but I wouldn't necessarily expect them to redo the whole thing. Can um, I tell, can yeah, I tell one quick it. story about, yeah. about audio problems? This a long, a long time ago, like three years ago, I was shooting a wedding and I was still pretty early on in like getting into weddings. And uh, the this big moment that I got great footage of the sun was perfect was the announcement when they all came like the bridal party came in. He announced their last name incorrectly, like blatantly. So the DJ just totally botched it. Yep. But I wanted that moment so bad that I spent like three hours recording their name with my voice and then like applying the right reverbs and like messing with the tonality and I tricked it that way. That See, funny. you hear that, guys? So if your audio mess, if your DJ messes up, you can send the audio to Oliver, and he will <laughs> pretend to be the DJ for you and fix it. <laughs> right. You can trust him. Very small fee. Uh, yeah. I've I've had I've had that happen before too, where he says it, and you're like, "Oh, that was way off." Uh oh. Okay. Like you know, <laughs> or he says like the bride's maiden name. You're like, "No, sorry, <laughs> fix it." So yeah, crazy. Um. <laughs> Creative films. Will you leave this up for a few hours? Yes. This video is staying up on the channel. It will be here fully ready. Um, as I said at the beginning too, I'm going to transcribe all of these questions out and pin them in a comment at the top of the video as well as in the description. So that way, if you have a question that you heard and you did not hear the answer, you want to go back, you can then watch back through all of these questions and hear them. Also, if you guys could hit the like button on this video, if you haven't done that yet, that would be super helpful to me. Would love that. Thank you. Um, Tyler Harrington needs some myth busting now. Uh, myth or fact, Sorry. using 44.1 kilohertz audio will cause more audio drift than 48, 48 kilohertz audio when shooting normal mirrorless slash DSLR cameras. When syncing with a DSLR. That's what he meant to say. Got it. <clears throat> um... That's that's hard to say. If it is 44.1 in the recorder and 48 in the camera, yeah, that's probably going to lead to that. But I have had sync drift with 48 across the board. I've had sync drift with 96 across the board. It's all about the clock speed of the actual unit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, it's always going to happen if you record long enough. So fact. <laughs> If you if you have two hours like, long, you're gonna have some drift. If you have a long wedding ceremony, you're probably gonna have some drift, definitely. So that's where, um, 
as I said before, a big fan of Pluralize comes in with its auto drift correction because otherwise you're gonna be going in like cutting every like 10 minutes or so and like shifting your audio a little bit to make sure it's yep. lined up. Yep. But Pluralize does that all for you and it's really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Shari, thank you. That was what I wanted to know. You have genuinely helped propel my wedding videography to success from Scotland. Yes, man, still wanna to go to Scotland. Would love to go. Have you been to Scotland, Oliver? I have not. Let's see. Oliver and I will come. Trip. Oliver and I will come to visit you, Sean. We will come. <laughs> we will come stay with you. Please prepare rooms for us. Thank you. Uh, talk about kilohertz. <laughs> talk about whatever you want. Kill, as long as it's kilohertz related. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay, Matthew Psyche. Hi, what's up, Matt? Hi, Oliver. Nice to meet you. If we have Hello. low budget at the beginning of our filmmaker life. Can we only use one mic to do outdoor and indoor? If yes, which one will be the best? Ooh, um, I would probably, uh, especially for, for wedding filmmaking, I would say the DR10L because so much of the audio on the wedding day is gonna be best recorded with a lav mic. So we're talking like the full ceremony, we're talking letter reading beforehand. Even like the toast at the reception, you could, lav mic whoever's speaking then whenever they're done you take the lav mic off and put it onto the next person so that'd probably be my first purchase what about you oliver well what i hear in that question is is kind of the conundrum about shotgun mics in and outside um because a lav mic it doesn't matter if you're in or outside that's not an issue it's omnidirectional i don't know if that's what you're getting at um in which case i would just ignore that that is for like that's like a conversation of like which sample rate is better like a million or a million point five you know what I mean? So definitely, definitely. Um, Brad, Brad's leaving, but he says that we've been very helpful. Yes, we're doing it. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, I think we're kind of wrapping it up here and all. Okay. Any other questions here? Ask them now. Cause you get, we're, we're, this thing's going to go to a one hour and 15 and we're at one eleven right now. Let's say so. Nice. If not sooner, ask your questions now, if you got them, Send your super chats now. We've only made $4.99, meaning that <laughs> Oliver and I are only able to purchase like two tacos. So if you want to help us out there with that. One big taco. <laughs> we want more tacos, dang it. No. Um, but yeah, you guys have been great. Thank you for asking us so many questions. I feel like this was like some really, really good stuff too. Like, oh, this was actually very helpful. Like stuff that I didn't fully know that Oliver's like, Oh, let me explain this to you. I'm like, oh, stealing that for a future explanation whenever people ask me things. Yeah, well, these questions are so good because it's like so many of these could be a whole video in themselves. Totally. Or like an endless pit of constant exploring and no real answers. Definitely. You know what I mean? Which, which is why Oliver has a YouTube channel of so many audio things. He's just digging deeper and deeper. Like, yes. I'm talking about audio things, guys. Audio things. Let's do it. <laughs> no, oh, man. Oh, man. Um. Okay, cool. Kyle, can you do this again in the future? Yeah, like we would love to do something like this in the future, of course. Duh. Mm -hmm. We're friends, yo. It's fine. Um, let's see. Houston Rafe, I had a package of Rycote undercovers in my case for a year and never used one. Do you fool with them? Yeah, I use them like every wedding. Highly, highly recommend them. I use them with my uh, Microphone Madness Matchstick lapel mic because it's really tiny. Yes, definitely recommend those. If you don't like undercovers because of their size, or I'm not sure why you don't like them, look at Bumblebee Industries uh, Invisilovs. They have better stickability, in my opinion, but they don't have good noise reduction. They don't have good wind reduction. Um, so, yeah, check out Bumblebee Industries. They're real clean, real nice. They're good for hiding a lav when uh, you don't have wind problems. See, this is a product that I did not even know about, so now I have to go out and buy it. Yeah, you got to check it out. Oliver just said to. So, yeah. Oh, well. I wish I had an affiliate link to send you for that, but I don't think they're on Amazon. So, oh, see, I got to check just that tell out. Them, just tell them I sent you, and they'll be like, who's that? <laughs> who's Oliver? What? It's fine. What are you about? If, it, if you bought it from Sweetwater, they call him all the time. So, he, <laughs> they would know. oh, Oliver, yeah, he buys way too much stuff from us. <laughs> like, he, keeps he sold us his truck to buy audio gear. So. He keeps us in business. It's great. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Let's see, Gilly Posey. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. I'm sorry. Uh, for a start in wedding recording audio ceremony, I I bought a Tascam DR10L for the efficient, and I want to buy a shotgun to record both the vows. What would you recommend? I I would honestly just buy another Tascam DR10L and put it on the groom because you're not going to be close enough for the shotgun to be able to pick up from the distance 
the vow is occurring, unless you're like really close disrupting the ceremony, I would probably just buy another DR Tanel and put it onto the to the groom. And you should be okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're gonna do with those shotgun mics, but they're probably not gonna be a good application for vows if it's live. Yeah. Ooh, okay. This is uh <clears throat> This is this is a good uh, this is a good question here. We'll end on this one, I think, here and all. Uh, where did it go? Uh, okay, Kyle Taylor. Is it possible to fix noise from background sources during letter readings? I had an ambulance drive by in my last one. <laughs> well, I, the only thing I'll say, and then I'll let Oliver jump in here. I would say if you have an ambulance drive by during the letter reading, ask them to read it again. The emotion may not be quite as solid, but having quality audio versus like ambulance sound in the background, it's always better. It's always easier. I will say to just have somebody re-record it and record it properly the first time or do it again versus having to dig in and watch six of Oliver's videos about all audio repair to, to have to fix things. Yeah. Stuff like ambulance noises is tough. Even with uh, RX eight isotope, the software I use stuff like that is just tough because it's a, it's like it's not a static noise, so the software doesn't have an ability to really grab it and replace it the way it does with like a static sound. So yeah, always do it again. There is there is nothing worse than the mindset of oh I'll fix this in post. Don't fix it in post. Get it right right away. Save yourself heartache, headache. Very and true. Edit ache. <laughs> edit ache is a thing, but you do have <laughs> educational videos on your YouTube channel, correct? Yeah, for, yeah, because it's never going to be says. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. My sound reduction tutorial is all about like a noise in the room, like an air conditioner or a noisy microphone, how to just dampen that to an extent. Definitely. Definitely. So. I, I love that. That's so good. Cause people ask me that all the time. Like, let's go watch Oliver's videos. There you go. It's he's already done that. <laughs> um, okay. I think we're going to call it right here. One sixteen in, um, Sweet. Oliver, tell them, Matt. tell them where they can find you. Tell them about yourself. Yeah, so you can find me uh, at just my YouTube page, which is Oliver J. Hughes. Um, just Google it or just slash Oliver J. Hughes. And over on my channel, we do about two videos a week, sometimes less, sometimes more, depending on my mood, really. Uh, but it's mostly about audio for video because that's a huge need. But I also love talking about filmmaking, music production, all things creative. So come check it out. Come hang with me. We're growing this year and having a good time. So. Definitely. Yes. And I will echo that. Like, I want to say that Oliver popped up on my YouTube channel whenever I had just bought a dr 10 and he was like, dr 10 review thing. And I'm like, oh, this is good. And like, just the stuff that he's, wa that he's making, I'm like, Oliver should have a lot more subscribers in this because Oliver is very knowledgeable about all this sort of stuff. And the quality of videos that he is making is very high. So highly recommend you guys all checking him out. He is linked right in the description of this video there. It should just be right there below if you want to check out his channel and subscribe. As I said, my kit page is down there. If you want to check out any of the equipment that we talked about, I will be transcribing this out and I will be leaving this up. Um, otherwise, I think that is about it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us though. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, All like thank you everybody. Fun stuff. You. Good yeah, questions. Definitely. Definitely. Um, cool. I think that's about it then. You guys have a great night. Oliver and I are going to go eat dinner now probably and hang out. Well, not really hang out because he lives multiple states away. But, you know, whatever. It's cool. We're going to go share a taco somehow. Yes. We'll mail tacos to one another. There you go. <laughs> cool. All right. Please hit the like button if you haven't already. See you guys later. Have a great day. If we, if you, oh, lastly, if you have a question that we did not answer or get to, by all means, send me an email at whoismat.com with your question and I will get back to you about it. Or okay. send Oliver a message through all of his. He's got a ton of different ways to connect with him through his channel. Do you have a website, Oliver? Do you have one of those? Yeah, yeah OliverJHughes.com is my is my website to go to. Just spam him through there heavily. Oliver J. Hughes is a unique name, so just Google it and it should <laughs> find something. So. Perfect. Perfect. Hopefully. We'll see you guys later. Y'all have a great night. Bye. Bye.